Well, you're a girl's but I talk Udvi Zildjuk with a Pashtun Mojaro Shagwan. Uh, that is my attempt at speaking Hungarian. I think I did a pretty good job. Um, so welcome on this fine chilly morning uh, in Budapest. Uh, it is very cold, it's like 3-4 degrees but I think I'm quite well wrapped up. Uh, and on this journey I'll take you guys to some of the attractions uh, in Budapest. It's a very nice 2-3 day sort of weekend getaway type of holiday. And we start this holiday here at the Hungarian Parliament, otherwise known as Orshagaz in Hungarian. So the Hungarian House of Parliament was finished construction in 1904-56, something like that, I don't remember the exact date. And it was at the time, of course, when this was part of the bigger country known as Austria-Hungary, or as my brother annoyingly calls it, Hungary-Austria. It just doesn't sound right like that. And in that time, of course, the, the nation as a whole, sharing a dual capital with Vienna, was triple the size that it is currently, which is why you'd wonder why a nation of 10 million has such a big parliament. Now, as I show you these beautiful images inside the parliament, it's made with 40 kilograms of gold, half a million precious stones, and it took 100,000 workers to build, which makes it just honestly extraordinary and exquisite. As you can see, in Hungary, they have a, a, by a two houses of parliament, the upper and the lower houses of parliament, similar to, I guess, what we have in the United Kingdom, uh, except unlike the United Kingdom, we have a multi-party system uh, in this country, so several parties will come together to form a coalition, uh, currently led by the Prime Minister of Hungary, Viktor Orban. And that is the Hungarian Houses of Parliament for you. If you have time, you should definitely take a boat journey down the River Danube and see all the buildings lit up and hear the Hungarian Houses of Parliament shimmering in gold in reflection in the river. On the banks of the Danube River, we have the Shoes by the Danube mon Monument, which is a memorial dedicated to those who were killed along the banks of the Danube River. Now the story goes that those who were shot and killed had their bodies thrown into the Danube River for it to be washed away, their bodies to be washed away. But before that, they were asked to remove their shoes because it was considered valuable. Hence, the shoes alongside the Danube River. We are now at the Dohani Street Synagogue. And the Dohani Street Synagogue is one of the largest in the world, specifically the largest in Europe, housing nearly 4,000 worshippers at any given time. And for those who don't know, Budapest was at one point 23% Jewish and Hungary as a whole had hundreds of thousands of Jews. And obviously, tragically, uh, so many of them were exterminated in the Holocaust or were deported. And as a result, it's estimated that about a third of those who died in the Holocaust were indeed Hungarians. And there are many memorials around Budapest dedicated to those who died or suffered during the Holocaust. Another thing to know about this uh, synagogue is that it's the birthplace of Theodor Herzl. Now, for those who don't know who Theodor Herzl is, he's considered the founder or the ideological founder of the political ideology of Zionism, which underpins uh, occupied Palestine, otherwise known as Israel, today. Now, one thing you'll notice about the uh, synagogue is the architecture and anyone who has a glimpse of Islamic architecture will look at it and think, wait, what? Was that a mosque? Is that a mosque? Well, you wouldn't be mistaken. It turns out, of course, that, look at this. Sorry, I'm still trying to figure out how this gimbal works. But actually, it turns out that the inspiration for this comes from the Moors. Now, the Moors, of course, were based in northern Africa. And so when you see the inspiration here, the brickwork, the strip, the stripes, the arches, uh, the domes, it's taken inspiration from the Moors and from Islamic Spain. So although it's a synagogue from its inception in the 1850s, the inspiration for the architecture is very, very Islamic in nature. Now, one thing that people have asked me when I record these vlogs is, am I doing this from a script? or uh, whenever I talk about these sites of attractions or sightseeing opportunities. And the answer is no. Every place I go to, I love to read about the background and history of the place. And whatever I do remember, I genuinely just regurgitate it from whatever I remember in my mind. So it all comes from the heart. Nothing is scripted in any way possible. Then back to normal vlogging and we're at our next stop, which is Halaj Bashtia. Let me explain that. One of Budapest's most famous attractions, which is the Fisherman's Bastion. Now, it's called the Fisherman's Bastion because, well, one part of the walls of the city of Buda was entrusted to the Fisherman's Guild, hence the Fisherman's Bastion. It is containing seven towers, as you can see, there's one behind me, 
to represent the seven men who follow the story, well, the seven men who founded Hungary as we know it. And of course, one of the more famous parts is that it is a lookout over the river Danube. And as you'll now see in some of the shots I've taken, with some beautiful and stunning views, including views of the Hungarian parliament. Honestly, I could admire this view for hours, just looking out onto the rooftops and, of course, a zoom-in shot on the Hungarian House of Parliament, Orsagaz. Honestly, this is one of the best attractions in Budapest. Conveniently opposite the Fisherman's Bastion, we find the St. Matthias Church. More on that in this explainer. Now here at the Matthias Church. Now the Matthias Church was built in the 14th century. But interestingly enough, it was actually converted into a mosque by the Ottomans when they briefly ruled in the area. And despite that though, none of the Christian work or depictions or anything was actually altered or destroyed in any way and all of it was kept as is. Now there's a famous legend uh, here in Budapest that in 1686 the Marian miracle took place. And according to the legend, there was a wall um, outside the church area and the Muslims were praying. And then the wall collapsed, revealing a statue of the Virgin Mary known as the Madonna statue. And when that happened, the Muslims, as they were praying, they saw the statue, they felt terrified and they lost their morale. And it said that the city fell the same day. This is obviously in the wider context of the wars between the Ottomans and the Holy League, which consisted of a coalition of Habsburg, Germany, the Holy Roman Empire and other several countries. The Fisherman's Bastion in St. Matthias Church is part of the Buddha Castle complex completed in 1769. It offers great views once again over the city of Hungary and the river Danube and today houses the Budapest History Museum and the Hungarian National Gallery. You should definitely check these out. I thought I'd add something really quick. Transport is really good here in Budapest. It's well connected by buses, by trams, by metro and it's really easy to get around and as a city it's already quite small as it is you know a population 1.1 1.7 million and all the main attractions are quite easy to walk by you're talking you might do a lot of walking maybe at most half an hour walk but even if you didn't want to walk for half an hour um you can get yourself a pass so the one i have is the 72 hour pass and that gives you unlimited um, metro tram and bus travel for 72 hours and it costs 15 pounds and in london I think 12, 13 pounds is the daily cap for one day. So for three days unlimited travel, it really puts you at ease. Uh, but that also doesn't include um, the transport to and from the airport. That's an express bus ticket that is to be purchased separately. So that's a quick note for anybody who wants to come to. Well, this is an unexpected surprise. It's snowing in Budapest. And the security guard that I was talking to, he tells me this is the first time it has snowed in Budapest since the winter started. And it's crazy because it was literally sunny yesterday and I was wondering if I regretted bringing my sunglasses or not. Well, guess what? The snow is coming down and the good news though is we're going to the thermal baths today. So a good opportunity to walk. So here at the central market um, here in Budapest and it opened in 1897 and it resembles many of the sort of markets you find in major European cities. Think of the La Bocaria market in Barcelona. And it has just about everything you'd imagine, all the local produce, everything this place is known for, from the sausages to the paprika as well. Like for those who don't know, the word paprika has a Hungarian origin. And I might ask my mom if she wants paprika, but she might just say, oh, well, everything is everywhere, globalization. I can get paprika in London, so why get it for me? So maybe, maybe that's right enough. But at the same time, um, over here, I've also tried langos. Langos is a traditional uh, Hungarian flatbread. It's a, it's a traditional sort of Hungarian hot bread and basically it's deep fried for those who don't know. I keep saying for those who don't know, the whole point of this is meant to be informative. But anyways, there's a Hungarian flatbread and I put cheese and sour cream on it. This mask keeps falling down. Cheese and sour cream and I also added olives and I don't care if that's controversial. Um, I just love olives. Um, but yes, that is the Central Market Hall. Although I'll be honest with you, no offense to anyone. I definitely prefer the La Bocchia market in Barcelona. Um, there was much more hustle and bustle to it. Um, but just like the one in Barcelona, you've got food courts here and everything, but obviously you can't eat goulash and so on because it's not halal. Um, but I'd love to try it someday if there's such a thing exists in London. We're now crossing the River Danube across the Liberty Bridge, which is in this 
I want to say sage green color, and I know sage green has become like this sort of aesthetic and become a very popular color these days. But as we cross the Liberty Bridge, we also should recognize its history. So it was originally constructed in 1897, then heavily damaged during the Second World War, and then rebuilt in 1945. The bridge is in the Art Nouveau style, featuring mythological sculptures, and at either end of the bridge, the country's coat of arms. Yes, that is correct. And now we cross over the Danube from Buda to Pest. Wait, from Pest to Buda, sorry. The two sides of Budapest are called Buda and Pest. They were originally separate cities, and now they are one. On to our next stop, the cave church. So right now we're just here outside the cave church. So the cave church, actually its origins lie by a man, a hermit named Saint Ivan. He used to use the thermal waters here for healing and curing purposes for the sick and whoever else came to visit him. Then eventually, in the 1920s, it was finally consecrated as a church. And so there are uh, numerous relics here, including obviously the altar and the cross, and a relic from St. Ivan. I believe his bone is present here as well. And as you can see, we have the stained glass uh, windows, uh, seating area, and the mass is also held here. So it very much is a fully functioning church in a cave. Here at the Galar Thermal Baths. Now this one I'm actually looking forward to a lot because I've never sort of been uh, in this kind of thing before. And obviously it's natural thermal hot springs, so there's obviously mineral properties as well. And so I'm hoping it has a really nice, calming, relaxing healing effect. It's not something I've done before, so I'm really looking forward to it. Alright, so I'm in the thermal bath right now and it's actually really, really relaxing. So what they have here is... There's like eight baths and also like this tide whirlpool type thing, which I'll show you as well. And the different pools are all at different temperatures. Anything from a normal swimming pool temperature all the way down to eight degrees and all the way up to 40 degrees, which is very, very warm. I couldn't last more than five, 10 minutes in there before I started like itching and sweating and so on. But one of these sort of more relaxed pools, my perfect temperature so far here is the 30, 35 degree mark very relaxing and obviously these waters are thermal hot springs from the thermal hot springs so full of minerals very relaxing and also uh, the heated water encourages the blood circulation because i can feel my heart beating fast and there's also steam room and sauna one thing to note though this is it might look like a spa experience but it's not actually um, a spa as you can tell it's very loud because it's a public space people come in to socialize to chill and hang out and talk the it's ultimate not... challenge. So after going in the hot bath, it's time to go in the cold bath. We're gonna go in nine degrees. Nine degrees Celsius. Well then, after making a fool of myself on camera for all of your entertainment, uh, that really sums up the Gallup baths. There's also the Shenyi um, natural thermal springs, which I also recommend. We're now currently at the St. Stephen's Basilica, which is the most important Roman Catholic Basilica in all of Hungary. It's named after Stephen I, who was the first king of Hungary, and it stands at a height of 96 meters, which is the exact same height as the Hungarian House of Parliament, the Orsagas. So you may be wondering, is it a coincidence that the Parliament and the Basilica are both standing at 96 meters? The answer is no, it's not a coincidence. It's very much intentional. It's meant to symbolize the equal importance of the worldly and spiritual affairs that both must be balanced and kept in check. Hence, they both stand at 96 meters. And the St. Stephen Basilica opened in 1906 and features intricate artwork, paintwork, sculptures across the walls, the dome, and with multiple bells weighing hundreds of kilos, if not in the tons. Truly, it is one of the most magnificent sites in Budapest, an example of the most exquisite in artwork and some of the best that Hungary has to offer as a whole and is a must visit for anyone that comes to Budapest. The Hero Square commemorates the chieftains who founded Hungary. There were six or seven chieftains uh, who were each leaders of their own tribes and they brought the Hungarians to modern day Hungary and founded this nation. And as such, uh, that was in the year, as they say, 896, which means it's now, well, the millennium was when this was built, along with other um, buildings and sculptures in Budapest. You may have noticed that I often said the years 1896, 190 something. 
because that is commemorating the millennium of the founding of Hungary. And so yes, we have this nice and wide open square, one of the most famous squares in Hungary. By the way, while you're in Hungary, make sure you have strudel. I believe I took sour cherry and cinnamon apple. Final stop is the Vajdahunyad Castle. The Vajdahunyad Castle was built in 1896. Yes, 1896 again, the year of the millennium, don't forget. And if you notice in the Vajdahunyad Castle, there are actually different architectural designs, anything from Renaissance, Gothic, Baroque, and so on, because it ref reflects the architecture of different eras. The reason being is that the castle is actually meant to contain elements which are copies of other um, structures, buildings, and features from elsewhere in the then Kingdom of Hungary. The main castle itself is actually a copy of the Hunyad Castle in Romania, uh, previously Transylvania, uh, associated with and part of the Kingdom of Hungary. So well then, that brings me to the end of my journey in Budapest. A full three days and four nights. Do I recommend it to you? 100% I do. Especially as a solo traveler, everything is clean, everything is safe, everything is easy to get around and accommodation is cheap. I was in a hotel and I still didn't pay that much. Now I'd imagine hostels being even cheaper too. Go along. Would I visit again? Maybe I would in a few years time. Who knows? Nevertheless, stay tuned for my next vlog and going forward I'm going to be posting every single month. So yes, like, comment and subscribe and share. Thank you for all the support.